Stuff Boutique when? I opened August of 2010. Do you have a background in retail? Do you have background in anything like this? I actually had a store with my mother when I was 14 years old for about from age 14 to 16. Um, it, was, it was a resale type store. We, we did more um, what's now called alternative type clothing, kind of a hot topic, if you've ever heard of hot topic right. in the mall, that kind of stuff. Stuff that you couldn't find everywhere, especially in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, this was in the Pacific Northwest where the whole grunge explosion was happening and we kind of catered to that crowd. So it's, it's kind of been in my blood since so I was a kid. Where are you from? Um, I'm originally from Tyler, was born in Tyler, and then my mother moved us to Washington State when I was nine and was displaced up there for several years, moved back to Texas in 1997, and the rest is history. All right. So you had kind of an idea for a resale shop with a twist already based on your experience as a child. Absolutely. I've always loved bargains and digging and finding treasures. I, um, I started collecting, you know, thrift store finds and garage sales finds when I was a kid, you know, like 13, 14, 15. Um, and I just kind of always saw beauty and interest where other people didn't necessarily. And everybody in town knew you as that server at, 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 at Kitchens. <laughs> well, one of, one of the three or four blondes, right. I think. I was the original blonde. You were the original blonde. <laughs> Walk us through the moment that you either sat around at home or at work or laying in bed and said, okay, I'm going to do this and, I, and I'm going to do it now. I can tell you exactly how that happened. I had decided, well, I've been at the restaurant for many, many years. It worked for me for many, many years as a single mom. You know, I had a relatively flexible schedule. I never had to put my child in daycare and then I enjoyed my job. I left you know, interacting with people and I had fun. I was able to be myself for the most part and the money was pretty, pretty good for my means. Um, I always said I would do it until it didn't work. Um, but I also had a little goal in the back of my mind that I had to be out of there by age 35. I just, I, I couldn't, I could not be. Didn't know what I was going to do. I, uh, I don't have any formal education um, other than high school. Never went to college. Um, so I really didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew something had to happen. And 35 rolled around <laughs> January 1st of 2010, and I still didn't know. And um, somebody asked me, a person really close to me asked me, actually on that day, January 1st, what my dreams were. We were talking about my, my job as a waitress and I, you know, how I felt about it and how I, it, was, it was kind of a sore spot with me at my age that I was kind of you know, getting uncomfortable with it. And this person asked me what my dreams were and I didn't have an answer. Hmm. And that was a defining moment. <laughs> so this was your dream, you just... That was a tough one. Well, it was a dream, but I didn't feel, I never felt like it was it was big enough to be a dream. Because people, right. I always perceive people's dreams as being, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you want to cure cancer, you want to, you know, do something grandiose and huge. And I thought my dream of having a little boutique wasn't valid as a dream. Were you prepared uh, mentally for a slow start to your business? Absolutely. Um, I really didn't have, in fact, about three days before I opened, I kind of had what I call a mini stroke, which is obviously I didn't have a literal stroke, but I just had this panic, this wave of panic that hit me and I thought, well, what am I doing? I've lost my mind. I have no way of knowing if this is going to work. None. I have no way of knowing if I'm going to get a steady flow of merchandise. I have no way. And uh, I just swallowed it and said, too late now, no turning back. And I did it. And I, I really expected a slow start. I expected you know, maybe a good a good first week or something, or a decent first week, and then, you know, the buzz to kind of die down. Um, and it, it has done nothing, but it just, the momentum has just been incredible. My first week was was phenomenal. Um, I, it, it exceeded my expectations by a thousand percent. I, I never had an actual figure in mind. I had decided if I can do X amount of dollars in, in one week, at least one week of the month, then I'll be okay. 
Um, I don't know how I came up with that figure. I pulled it out of the air, and it's worked. I've never, I've never dropped below that figure. And you have, um, you started this part time, right? You were open just a few days a week. Yes, because I was still at the restaurant because I was still scared. I was, I wasn't ready just to say, you know what, this is going to work, and I'm going to do it because I am a single mother um, of a 12 year old that got grows shoes. <laughs> quickly and you know I I have a house payment and a car payment and insurance and you know all those things like everybody else I couldn't I wasn't ready to just trust it you know completely so I did start out three days a week because I was still working at the restaurant and I kind of I kind of scheduled my store hours around that um, and I did that for four months I did both both for four months and finally I said I think I can do it I think it's gonna work the momentum's good enough and it's time for me to put everything into it. And, and that's when I was able to quit my job of 11 years. That's when you jumped off the cliff. I did. <laughs> uh, Never and you, back. You, you're seeing growth month over month since, since then? Absolutely. Keeps getting bigger and bigger Absolutely. and bigger. The feedback's just incredible. Let's talk about how you promote your business. I know what you're doing on Facebook. How else are you promoting your business? Honestly, Facebook is 90%. Five percent of my of my advertising. Really? I aside from word of mouth, um, which I would have even even the word of mouth I'd attribute eighty percent of that to Facebook. Um, I've done some print advertising in various forms, you know, the local paper and some you know semi local papers. Um, for the most part, it's been Facebook. It's been I, I have a web I have a web address. I have it linked to Facebook because. I have access. I had a friend tell me in the beginning when I was starting, you need a you need a website, you need this, you need this, and I said, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Facebook because I have access to those people every day. A website, a customer has to seek you out, or a potential customer has to seek you out. They have to type in your address. They have to remember or have your your web address written down. If you can get them attached to you on Facebook, you have access to however many people you can collect. Which right now I'm at. 1,369, I think, um, fans. I have access to 1,300 people every day until they block me, <laughs> until they delete me or block me, which uh, I have had a few probably dropped, but not that many. And your endeavors on Facebook and promoting your business, were you were you guided in that, or have, have you just kind of used trial and error it in It has that? been completely trial and error and seat of my pants. Basically, I put myself in a position of a customer. What do I want to see? What information do I need? What catches my eye? What do I find attractive? What's filling a need for me? And I go as, I, you know, I am my demographic, aside from the age. <laughs> my demographic's a little younger than me, maybe half my age. But, um, but I'm still, I still have that teenage girl in me. And so I, I just put myself mm -hmm. there. And I've, and I, it, like I said, a lot of trial and error. I've made mistakes, of course. Um, and just, you know, it's just feeling out what people respond to. You try something, see how people respond. If you don't get a good response, you tweak it a little bit and tweak a little bit until you get the response you're looking for. Do you have goals on Facebook? I, I see that you put a lot of pictures and stuff on Facebook. Do you tell yourself, I'm going to do this and this and this every day or every three days on Facebook or anything like I that? Have a, I have a loose schedule of how I, of how I use Facebook. Um, because my store hours, I'm open Wednesday through Saturday. I'm closed, you know, Sunday through Tuesday. Um, now, my fans, you know, I take into consideration lifestyle. What are my fans doing on these certain days of the week? When are they active on their Facebook? When are they sleeping? When are they, you know, when are their kids at games? That kind of thing. And I take all of that into account of what their lifestyle is. And I choose my posting, the times that I post pictures or you know, items of interest, I try to schedule that around that and think about, you know, when they're, when it's going to be most visible and when I'm going to catch the most people. So there is, there is a, a slight method to the madness. It's not random. When it started out random, I would post things at two o'clock in the morning. I would post things, you know, in the middle of the afternoon, just whenever it came to me or whenever it was convenient for me. And I was realizing that, you know, there were certain times where I was getting a lot more traffic or a lot more interest, and there were things that I thought were very interesting that got no play. So I, again, you know, adjusted adjusted to that and just paid, it's just observation, just paying attention. 
Do you have any uh, concrete plans for the future? I wouldn't say they're concrete. They're still they're still in the in the mulling over process. I I do look forward to expanding in the relative near future. I don't have an exact date. I kind of have a ballpark idea. Um, it's definitely there's a need for it. I was, you know, customers were requesting that I expand within my first two weeks. Have you found yourself not taking certain items because you just don't have the space? Things that you would like to have in here? Sometimes. Not there's not much. I, I pretty I'm pretty locked in on the kind of things that I want to carry. There are a few I'd like to carry a maternity line, you know, increase to, to a maternity wear. Um, it may be a, a Maybe a few more. Um, I might do a western, you know, a, a, the the blingy western East Texas girl, you know, look that's so popular. I may add a little of that in there if I were to expand. But the core, the core of what I'm going to do is is locked in. This is what I like. This is lifestyle, and I, I it, it's working. In an economy that's somewhat flat. What do you think is the single most important thing to keep in mind when starting a new venture? You've got to be realistic. You've got to, there's got to be a need for your product. I, I'm actually in the process of reading um, a book called Delivering Happiness. It's written by one of the founders of Zappos.com. And one of the things that he says is, you could make the you could be the manufacturer of the best seven finger gloves in the world. They could be the highest quality, they could be the most attractive, they could be the you know, the most durable seven finger gloves ever created. However, <laughs> where's your market? Especially in times of you know, a flat economy. You've got there's gotta be a market for your product. People have to need it. And you know, do we need clothes? Yes. Do we need designer clothes? We really do. <laughs> we do. To somebody who's opening a business or thinking about opening a business like you like you did, what's your suggestion to them? I would suggest that you really, really analyze your reasons why, why you want to do it. Is it are you driven by money? Are you driven by the fulfillment of building something? Is it, are you passionate about it? I think passion is key. Um, I see a lot of people go into these businesses because they think, oh, this is, this is something people want and I can make a lot of money doing this. And that may be the case, but if you're not passionate, you either have to be really, really passionate about making money or you have to be really passionate about what you're doing. If you're passionate about both, then... That just makes it even that much it. better. <laughs> you got it. The biggest surprise has been the relationships that I've built with customers so quickly and the trust that they have in me. Um, people come in virtual strangers and sometimes within minutes we're talking about intimate details of our life. They're telling me, you know, their heartache. They're telling me about their insecurities. And it's, it's I've had more than one, one of my customers said it best. Um, she said when she comes in this is true retail therapy you hear the term retail therapy thrown around and she said this is this is real retail therapy and i, I we actually kind of have a joke here that it's group therapy every day <laughs> where there's been tears you know lots of laughing sometimes tears you know lots of secrets lots of stories and that has been i have to say that's aside from from actually making my little dream come true that's that's the number two that's the number two thing that's most satisfying in this is that people when when somebody gives me a hug at the end of a of their shopping session and says thank you so much you've helped me so much they might not have even bought anything but they left with something and that makes me feel like I'm doing something right good so that goes into my next question. What's your single most rewarding experience here so far? What's what's the one thing that sent you home at the end of the day soaring? Oh, there's been so many. <laughs> um, almost every day. Almost every really? day. When I, I guess when I walk into my store every day, well, every business day, <laughs> and I go, this is what I do. This is my job. And it doesn't feel like work. And I've never once dreaded coming to work, not once. And 
nine months or however long I've been open. May of 2010, I had decided to start reading a book that somebody had given me months prior. It's called Live Like a Fruit Fly by Gay Berman. And it was one of those inspirational books and a friend had told me that it was really good and I needed to read it. And I thought, oh yeah, I'll read it. And it sat. So I, I finally picked it up after five months. <laughs> and I started reading it. And I'd already had, the wheels were already turning. I didn't know what they were turning to and I didn't really know what they meant but I was getting more uncomfortable where I was um, in my job and in my life path. And I was kind of paralyzed, if you will. Picked up the book, read to page 100, laid it down, turned off my light, and the next day got up and started looking for retail space. It happened like that. I just woke up and said, today's the day. And I found retail space within 48 hours. And what's that book called? It's called Live Like a Fruit Fly. It's written by Gabe Berman. And I usually keep a copy here at the shop to lend out. It's actually lent out right now. Somewhere between the front cover of that book and page 100, you found something that motivated it, you. It, it, absolutely. And I've told him that, and I've told everybody that will listen. Read it, page 100. And I've read, gone back and read page 100, and I don't know what it was about that stopping point, but... And I did, it, it took me another three weeks to pick the book back up. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. That, that was enough. That was my next question. Yeah, if that you was ever finished I it. did finish the book. It took me a while. But um, there was something that spoke to me. And basically, it's, um, you're dying. <laughs> you're dying right now. And what are you going to do about it? Are you going to stay somewhere that you're unhappy and that you're unfulfilled? Or are you just going to go out there and do it? And I thought, you know what? You're right. There's a lot of truth to that. Yep. So I did it. Shiloh, thank you for your time. Uh, there's a lot of buzz on the streets about this place. There has been since you were just in business. Mm -hmm. All I can say is keep it up. Hopefully this will be an inspiration to somebody else. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate it. I appreciate your support. You've been a cheerleader since day one. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Thank you.